Hey everyone, welcome to Film Talk, a podcast where two gals talk film, television, and everything in between the reels. I'm your host, Elana Melendez, head of marketing and a critic here at fullcirclecinema.com, and I am joined here today by Miss Josie, as usual. Hi. <laughs> and, you know, you saw the title, you guessed it, the Marvel stands have re-entered the chat, and we're gonna do a proper, as they, finally. As they tend to do. <laughs> <laughs> they tend to do. <laughs> We, we're just here and we like to make ourselves seen and heard. Um, but yeah, we're finally going to properly do like a, a season review of uh, the second entry into the Marvel Disney Plus kind of universe that we got going on here. Correct. And we're going to talk about Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which was, it, 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 it surprised me. It very pleasantly surprised me. Not that my expectations were low. As we said a couple weeks ago, a couple episodes ago, our expectations were healthy. And, you know, I was very pleasantly surprised with the quality. We were served quality. So, Miss Josie, would you like to kick off the discussion today? Let's go. So, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, six episodes. I'm going to give you the gist of how I feel. I wasn't into it until episode four. That, that's yeah. it. It seems <laughs> yeah. about that tracks. Episode, yeah, episodes four, five, and six were my favorite. Mostly because me <laughs> metieron fuego. They're, they're <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, they're like, tenemos que apresurar el paso. Yeah, they, 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 they actually, you know, got, things started actually taking off. Yeah, because a lot of people were saying that, I remember we were talking about it in the chat, that there are three episodes left and i was thinking well next episode is clearly the midpoint so stakes need to rise tensions need to rise everything needs to rise and that's what we got and i think that was the first time that i was like i received what i asked for and it was marvelous and after that i think episode five is the favorite of a lot of people I do think they slowed down the pace again to what we saw at the beginning in terms of pacing. Sorry for being redundant, but yes. Um, still, I think they handled it a lot better than they did in the first three episodes. And then the finale, well, the finale, again, they don't dembo at principio, and then by the midpoint, I was like, where is this going? And it slowed down again. So I think with Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the best way I can describe it is like you're in a car and someone keeps hitting the brakes in certain moments and you're like oh okay and then you keep going and then they like go at 90 miles per hour and then they slow down and then hit the brakes and you're like oh okay but you still got your desti- to your destination <laughs> that was the best analogy i could come up with <laughs> i liked it point point in case i liked it i did like it i just if i had to rank like wandavision falcon wandavision is still up for me I have to really agree with Josie here because it's I I think I I was into it, but I didn't really feel like that urgency of oh this is getting good by the end of episode three, beginning of episode four, um because it's just it was a very much a how you say a slow burn but in an underwhelming manner. Because WandaVision, and yes, the comparisons are going to be inevitable, so shut up. So the WandaVision was that slow burn, but that actually kept you hooked. Like, it kept you really, really reeled in to, mm-hmm. this, is Wanda's ver- or, this is Wanda's world, and we're just living in it. That, it was, it felt a lot yeah. more engaging week to week yeah. compared to Falcon and Winter Soldier. Falcon and Winter Soldier just felt very much like we're gonna chill on the whole i can't wait for next week's episode so yeah the falcon and the winter soldier just really didn't have that same level of of urgency and i don't want to say conversation because who cares about who's talking about it but it's just just as a whole it felt like we really just kind of went back to that when Captain America Winter Soldier era, as we've mentioned before when the show started, um, which I do like, but it didn't, I don't know, it just really didn't hit as hard as one would have expected it to 
very soon. Like, you had to wait quite a bit for mm-hmm. it to actually, like, pick up and become quite interesting. And even then, though, I really, really like the series. And I think it was a very strong... Um, like opportunity for character development. This is very much a character development focused series um, yeah. with uh, Sam Wilson and Bucky Barnes. I think they are obviously the standouts. Um, writing wise, I think the most care went into those characters, rightfully so. However, in my opinion, I feel like so much care went into those two who are the protagonists. Mm-hmm. I get it. But everyone else fell flat. Everything else yeah. just kind of didn't really meet that same standard of quality that we were getting with Sam Wilson and Bucky Barnes. I feel like the one that came the closest was Zemo. Because Zemo is, yeah. you know, in and of its- himself, a very interesting character, a very interesting um, and compelling Marvel villain, especially in the cinematic universe. But aside from that, everyone, including, like, the whole Flag Smashers uh, plotline felt really mm-hmm. weak. It just, it, everything else felt like it was just an excuse um, to propel Sam Wilson and Bucky Barnes forward in the story, which, you know, it, I'm not that saying it was bad. Said, it was just, yes. A lot of people will say that this was basically six episodes to further develop Bucky and Sam and let us know what their place in the MCU is going to be from now on. And they say, like, it's a bad thing. Mm-hmm. That's not a bad thing. I'm very happy no, with exploring these, char- these side characters more because we didn't get that. And we mentioned that in our first episode. I will also say that I do like that we had a specific set of players in the show because nothing was thrown in just for the sake of it or for a spectacle. Everything felt like it had a purpose, which I really appreciate. Of course. Because it would have been very easy to go off the rails with this show. Yeah, they could have gone super large scale with it. And I do appreciate that it it didn't pretend to be something that it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And it was very, very straightforward. I think what really... The only elements that I wasn't a super huge fan of in the finale and spoilers, if you haven't seen the finale. We're getting into um, spoilers, people. <laughs> yeah, at this point. Uh, by the by the time this comes out, Twitter will have spoiled it for you, whether you like it or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter is relentless. So, yeah. I no think man's land. What really fell flat, I feel, in the finale episode were like the the reveals that were we were already guessing it, it was a little bit predictable in a sense and the the way that they did like a the big reveal of who not really the villain like it was it wasn't even a whole it was future Agatha all along. villainous figure <laughs> exactly future villainous figure and then also um we had John Walker also being set up quite a bit. I, I, mm-hmm. I, I like the direction they, they went with with John Walker as a character as well. Because once again, he's not he's not a Thanos. He's not like the bad guy. He's not here mm-hmm. to be an asshole on purpose. It's just how he is. <laughs> yeah, he's just going to follow more along the lines of Carly where he just genuinely thinks that he is doing what is correct and what is right based on what he Mm -hmm. has been thought what he has been taught (laughs) exactly he's just there thinking that he's doing the right thing Mm -hmm. and you know we do finally get you know that intro to what he's his place in the mcu is going to be which is u.s agent um so that was fun that was cool um yeah but everything else aside from like er like i said everything is aside from sam and bucky just felt a little underwhelming but it wasn't bad by any means um i think once again the story and the character development was super strong with sam and bucky because these aren't side characters anymore we he is the protagonist now uh, as i'm sure a lot of us have seen already this is you know we've we've seen the this being built up since day one since episode one we know the end game here is for sam wilson to take up the mantle of captain america and they delivered and i think the the comic book accurate uh suit and wings that they gave him it's just really emotional like the the (laughs) that they really gave us that marvel grandeur with the whole suit that entrance 
the entrance, the fight, the way that he was still, you know, despite his training from episode five, you know, he's still getting into that um he's still getting that used routine. To it. He's still getting used to it. He's still getting used to using the element of the shield uh alongside the the wings that he's been using for so many years. And you know, I love how he it, they don't show him to just, you know, pick it up and do it perfectly and flawlessly right off the bat. You know, he he has a little bit of a struggle there, but it's still so much fun and it was it was very much a, a giddy moment when he was on screen um, as Captain America and him owning uh, the the mantle that has originally been passed down to him. Mm-hmm. And I really loved the exploration of the of the racial themes uh, in it, and especially in episode five. I think as episode five was definitely the strongest mm-hmm. episode of the series. Episode six was good, but episode five, I think, like as a whole, was just top notch. It was just lovely Lo- yeah. love it i loved the dynamic with sam and isaiah bradley i loved how yes, that, was that my favorite part. yes i think it was just really really it, though those elements were done with such care um but without tiptoeing or shying around the subject and i i really loved how they did it i think it is such an important um thing to acknowledge that sam wilson is a black man and mm-hmm. ignoring that would have just you know defeated the purpose um and and the complexities and the nuances uh that the mantle of being captain america implies for Mm -hmm. someone that is not white and i really liked the development that they gave bucky in that realization because bucky was very childish and and immature in the beginning of course because there was an emotional Mm -hmm. attachment to that and he felt that sam had just disregarded it completely just for kicks when you know Mm -hmm. it was a lot more complicated than that and yeah. his direct and succinct acknowledgement um, of these manners really showed that Bucky has grown a lot as a character and that he he work, works very well. And he, Sam and Bucky bounce off of each other really well. And I really, really yeah. love that for them. I love that for them. I will say, again, at first, like, I love what the show is trying to do, but... I wasn't as excited as I was for WandaVision when it came to each week. Again, until episode four. Just when you got to episode four, it's like they set up everything perfectly and they knew where they were going and they knew what they were doing. So with that being said, I am very excited for what season two will have to offer because they are going to do a season two. Yeah, they honestly. are. And we know just, Captain America 4 yeah. got announced, but... Yes. So season two will Hello. probably happen after that. Exactly. I do they, love again, that they brought format. back the Dora Milaje. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we'll probably see Bucky dealing with what happened with him in Wakanda. And we'll probably see Sam Wilson dealing with being Captain America now. But also just to get the receipts for season two. Um, WandaVision is being submitted for Emmy consideration for limited series. True. And Falcon the Winter Soldier is going to be submitted for drama. Which means... Oh. Yes, which means that WandaVision has ended with its first season. There will be no more. But if Falcon and the Winter Soldier is being submitted for drama category, it's because they do have planned more seasons to come. I love that. I love that for them. Get ready, because we're going to see more (laughs) of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. (laughs) Or, since we're in spoiler territory, Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Captain America and the Winter Soldier. That just, that butters my bread. It waters my crops. I'm so happy. <laughs> he looks so good. And the way that he just owned it and was just unapologetic about it, it was it was very good. Yeah. And I'm what so was it happy that for I Anthony said, Mackie. What was it that I said? Que yo dije that um, when he made his entrance in the suit, I hadn't wanted to do the Pledge of Allegiance in so long until now. <laughs> facts though it's like you know i don't i don't ever pledge allegiance to anything but what i do it's for him it's for cap it's for my captain america nothing but but respect for my captain america wow it was just you know it's anthony mackie is honestly such a perfect casting i think the he has such a beautiful uh brilliant future as captain america in the mcu and taking on a much more prominent uh protagonist mm-hmm. role uh, at, in the mcu as a whole very excited very 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 excited because he's just such a good character he's so 
fun. He's my comfort character. Like, you know, him and, and Bucky, they, they're just such very fun characters that do have drama. They do have, like, good storylines that, you know, oh, the drama thriller action, they, they deliver. But they're mm-hmm. also really good comedic relief without being cringe. And yeah. I think that's what I really love about it the most. It's the positive notes about it. It's not, it's not all angst. And I think that's what really, really made this series a very good entry into the, you know, the Marvel Disney Plus uh, li- series line lineup of this Which, year. Which, if you want to add WandaVision, Falcon and the Winter Soldier to your MCU ranking list on Letterbox, you can do so. I don't have to give you permission, but I'll give it to you because I am doing it. <laughs> I am including them because they did not have to go that hard on a cinematic aspect for a TV show, but they did. They, they really did. did. It for us. The budget, the budget <laughs> so, yeah, for Wanda these Vision series has made it into my top ten of the MCU ranked, and Falcon and the Winter Soldier is close behind. I love it. I I, I love that. I love that energy, and I think if they're completely valid. Um, entries into the MCU that deserve that ranking and I think they deserve a very solid ranking <laughs> very you know this is the not, budget the budget <laughs> the budget's there the story's there and you know yes we're critiquing Falcon and the Winter Soldier a little bit more than, than we did with WandaVision but still but also excellent. we didn't do a proper <laughs> season finale episode that, that is also we true. did it us. mixed with Falcon and the Winter Soldier so that's on that <laughs> That's on that, and we're gonna move on from that. <laughs> but yeah, I I really yes, really I love think we can talk a little bit about uh, the flag smashers. Yeah, just before we go. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about Sharon Carter. Um, I already discussed U.S. Oh. agents. We already know where that's going. I'm I am still unsure about the whole Val character situation. We'll see how that goes. But I am excited to see, um where sharon carter goes like as the the new agent carter but also she's a villainess but she's like she, I, she's kind of like the cat woman right now she's the anti-hero at the moment mm-hmm. with like it's, it's interesting because she is relatively justified in her her perspective at the moment because of how she was treated and all that but i'm i'm very interested to see mm-hmm. how that plays out and i want to see her be a more prominent um antagonistic force in the in the series to to yeah. come and that's that on that the flag smasher storyline i felt still even in the finale just felt really weak what was it for what was the what point? What was it for? There was no they, point. They were murdered. <laughs> they were murdered. What was? The they point felt of like it? a disposable What were you prop? trying to say? Exactly. And the way that Carly died, you're basically carrying her like la pieta, <laughs> like a martyr. <laughs> Yeah, they they that tried was an painting. Italian Renaissance yeah. painting right there. They, yeah, I don't know if that that tracked as well as they thought it would. I don't know. It was just strange. I just wish there was more substance to what they were trying to do with them. Because in the end, again, that's the word. It just felt disposable. It felt like a disposable plot. Mm -hmm. For sure. And it was it was mostly serving to benefit John Walker's storyline. So again, it just felt disposable. Yeah, and that is the word of the day, folks. (laughs) Disposable plot lines. Can we stop? (laughs) <laughs> Can we actually just get rid of them and just, you know, make make sustainable plot lines, please and thank you. Yeah. Because, yeah, like you said, it's just it really didn't do all that much for Sam as a character. It's just felt mm-hmm. like an excuse. Like, it, again, it felt like just a, a weak prompt to just propel Sam and Bucky together on a mission. Yeah. That was about it. And and I'm not saying I didn't, you know, it I didn't like that they incorporated the super soldiers thing again. That's fine. Also, I do want to add that also Torres. My boy Torres was used For to what? introduce the Flag Smashers. <laughs> and then we barely see him again. Torres was really Like a there's that one character. moment where he's Yeah, there was just that one moment where he's kind of flirting with Sam according to the fandom. <laughs> And then I was not aware of this. <laughs> when? Give me the yes, timestamp. Ch- 
And and the chat, they were saying that that part where he tells Sam that he's a man of many surprises or something. Oh, that was, okay. <laughs> okay, I can see that. I can see that for them. That's cute. This is more like an inside joke insert here. <laughs> but, a wink, wink. Yeah. But yeah, Torres just served to be like a conscience or words of wisdom for Sam or to be a plot point to propel him into his next step and that was it yeah and i'm here like he has the wings they are broken but yet they are still in his possessions Mm -hmm. let torres fly (laughs) yeah let torres be the next falcon where in a world where sam wilson is the captain america i think there's Mm -hmm. space for that and i think you know torres had a he he had he was on screen for a couple minutes maybe and he has a lot of potential to be a very fun character and be that latinx representation that we are looking for that's what i was gonna say as many trap artists including a gran prose puerto ricano bad bunny have said black and latino gang let's go (laughs) thank you josie for that you've made my saturday (laughs) so you know if bad bunny said it it's it's right it's correct we can't argue with that so yeah i really hope that we we see more of we have a latino yo (laughs) we have a latino with taurus and then we have a black captain america let's go and let's take over let let, let's get it together people the mcu is any like moving forward the mcu is far less white than it was and i just you know let's go i'm excited I'm excited for the next phase because we've gotten Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings trailer. We're getting, hopefully, the Eternals trailer after the Oscars. (laughs) And that cast is just so beautifully diverse. And we have so many more properties, especially America Chavez, who is reportedly going to be introduced in the next Doctor Strange film. Mm -hmm. I was going to say the next Stranger Things film. (laughs) I am so sorry, people. You can tell that I'm... I miss Stranger Things, but yeah, we're getting. We might get America Chavez. I'm saying might, even though it's kind of been confirmed. But let's just play. <laughs> um, and the Doctor Strange film, and I'm just saying it because I really love America Chavez. She's one of my favorite characters, and she's Latina. Mm-hmm. So w- w- I think we're going in a very good direction, and I'm excited. Honestly, same. I think, uh, like we've said many a ca- many a time before. The future of the MCU is very bright and it's diverse and it's colorful. Monica Rambo. Monica Rambo. <laughs> I'm excited. It's gonna be good. Um, if there's one takeaway from the show, is definitely I do recommend it. Well, if you're watching this part, you've at this you've point you've either, probably already seen it. <laughs> yeah, you've probably already seen it. So rewatch it. Have fun. I rewatched it and I appreciated it a lot more now that I knew where I, where it was going. Mm-hmm. So I think that does help if you're still on the fence of how to feel with it character development was good side characters could use a a lot of like more work and improvement and hopefully we get that in the second season Uh, family dynamics were also really good i think the chill moments were really nice because sometimes chill moments really take you out and here i think there was a good balance more towards the end at the beginning it was a little iffy but again when they got their footing they got their footing and i commend them and i can't wait to see where this goes Honestly, yeah, I think, like you said, in the beginning, it was a little, you know, it, it didn't know where it wanted to go. It, it, all the pieces were just kind of shuffling around, waiting to, to fall into place. But when it does fall into place, it's, it, it's beautiful. I think it's very good. And uh, go watch it and rewatch mm-hmm. it and, and, and then rewatch WandaVision because we're going to have to wait like a month, <laughs> a month and a half for Loki, which is going to be, I think the most bonkers yeah. of the the three series on Disney Plus we're going to have this year because wait are we supposed to get I hawkeye this year so or next year i don't remember ready <laughs> when's hawkeye i should read i should read my own websites like <laughs> articles when's hawkeye supposed to come out it like it says 2021 yeah it's supposed to be from this fall but i don't know i know they wrapped production do- yeah it doesn't have a date it only says 2021 We'll see how that plays out. I know that what awaits us this summer on Disney Plus in terms of Marvel is Loki in June, at the beginning of June, and uh, Black Widow, finally, in July. So Mm -hmm. we should see how that goes. Um, Fingers crossed for Shang-Chi having a theater release in September. 
and very shortly thereafter, The Eternals in November. And then, wow, back to back to back. We have <laughs> Shang-Chi in September, Eternals November. Is Eternals still in November? Yes. And then we have Spider-Man yeah. No Way Home in December. So we have a very, very jam-packed Marvel season at the end of this year, for sure. Um, so we'll see how this plays out. But once again, yeah. I'm very excited. And I'm, I'm loving how everything's falling into place. Um, Marvel has been hitting more uh, and not missing for a lot of their 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 new content. And I hope you guys enjoyed as much as we do because it is fun. It is fun to see superheroes on screen. And not only that, superheroes with new and refreshing stories and hopefully more superheroes that look like you and us. So, yeah, I think before we get a little too mushy, we're going to wrap this up. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Be sure to stay subscribed on FullCircleCinema.com here on YouTube. And be sure to follow us on Twitter. Check out our news and, and reviews on FullCircleCinema.com. <laughs> and be sure to also follow Josie. Where, where can they follow you, Josie? You can follow me at the Josie Marie on Twitter and Letterbox, and you can also follow Film Posers at Film Posers, basically everywhere. And of course, as always, all the links will be down below in the description. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Captain Melendez, and stay stay updated, stay up to date. We have some really really fun things to talk about uh, coming soon. Um, also stay up to date, stay tuned with film talk. We are soon to be on more platforms. I've been, I've had this, you know, assignment, yes. uh, pending for a hot minute, but we're in the works. We're going to get, uh, our podcast onto like Apple podcasts, Spotify, all that jazz. So you can listen to us wherever you want. And, um, <laughs> That's it for today. Uh, stay tuned and let us know what else you want us to, to review and, and talk about. And we will take that into consideration. <laughs> uh, have a great day, y'all. Bye. Bye.